Good day. As the British House of Commons uh, uh, descends into acrimonious debate and the British government flounders, and as the United States government seems to have lost its way, the two Eurasian powers, Russia and China, have been working hard on their diplomacy relating to the unfolding crisis in Afghanistan. And it's striking to see how the Russians and the Chinese are uh, uh, speaking from essentially the same script about what needs to be done in Afghanistan and are now addressing their views to the key European states whom they're obviously trying to win over to their point of view. And the two states that the Russians and the Chinese have now been principally speaking with are uh, Germany, in the case of Russia, and Italy, in the case of China. And the uh, discussions have been taking place at, the, at a high level, with President Putin of Russia himself speaking for the first time about the developments in Afghanistan over the course of talks with Angela Merkel, the outgoing Chancellor of Germany in Moscow, and with the Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi having a fascinating and very interesting discussion with the Italian Foreign Minister, which was, I must say, in marked contrast in style and content to the clearly confrontational and angry discussion that Wang Yi had on the previous day with Foreign Minister Dominic Raab of Great Britain. I will focus with on Putin first, and I'll just say uh, a couple of things about the comments that he made uh, about Afghanistan. But before I do so, I should say a little about the context. This is Angela Merkel's last trip to Moscow as Chancellor, and it was clearly intended in part as a valedictory, uh, um, um, uh, as a valedictory visit. Uh, in effect, uh, uh, Merkel um, seeing Putin, who has been her most uh, consistent and frequent uh, partner on big international topics for the, first, for the last time as Chancellor. And of course, the relationship between Putin and Merkel is a very curious and very interesting one. In private, it is known that the two have deep criticisms and perhaps even a certain element of personal dislike towards each other. But in public, they're always extremely careful to convey an appearance of amity, of uh, friendship even, between themselves personally, even as it's clear that they disagree about pretty much everything. So we had an interesting uh, exchange in which Merkel was careful to refer to Putin by his first name, Vladimir. Um, I think she's almost the first leader I've ever seen talking to Putin in that in kind of informal way. And Putin, for his part, going out of his way to express warm feelings about Merkel, which he almost certainly doesn't feel privately, and making it clear that she's welcome to visit Russia whenever she wishes. Um, on the substance, on the issues discussed, they disagreed, as I said, about pretty much everything. About Navalny, about Ukraine, an important topic of discussion between the two, which I will shortly discuss in another video, and about all sorts of other matters, though they both spoke uh, um, as one about the uh, development, the growth of their economic relations which have been surging this year. But it is about Afghanistan and about what Putin himself said and about Merkel's reaction to it that I will first, uh, uh, that I will first speak uh, before I turn to Wang Yi's equally interesting discussion with the Italian foreign minister. And this is what Putin said to Merkel, or at least in Merkel's presence, these are words uttered by Putin over the course of a press conference attended by Merkel in Moscow, in the Kremlin, where the two leaders, 
the leaders of Russia and Germany addressed the media. And by the way, and quickly and in passing, it's striking how completely in command and in control of the press conference the Russian and German leaders were, how they each were able to answer difficult questions from the media, and the contrast with that and with the ineffective performances before the media of the current President of the United States is, I have to say, a painful contrast to make. Anyway, this is what Putin had to say about Afghanistan in his introductory comments at the press conference. Due to the rapidly unfolding events in Afghanistan, we prioritised this issue. The Taliban now controls almost the entire territory of that country, including its capital. This is the reality, and we must proceed from this reality as we strive to avoid the collapse of the Afghan state. It is imperative to put an end to the irresponsible policy of imposing outside values on others, to the desire to build democracies in other countries according to other nations' patterns without regard to historical, national or religious specifics and totally ignoring the traditions of other nations. We know Afghanistan and we know it well enough to understand how this country functions and have had the opportunity to learn firsthand the extent to which trying to impose unusual forms of government or social life on it is counterproductive. There has not been a single time when socio-political experiments of this kind succeeded. All they do is destroy states and is degrade their political and social fabric. At the same time, we see that the Taliban has already put an end to hostilities and is now seeking to ensure order, promising to guarantee safety for both local residents and foreign missions. I hope that this is how things will go. The international community should keep a close eye on these developments with the UN Security Council playing a coordinating role. There is one more point I want to make in this regard. We believe that it is essential at this point to prevent terrorists of all kinds from spilling over into Afghanistan's immediate neighbours, including under the guise of refugees. And that, so let's just unpack some of those comments. He speaks about how important the situation in Afghanistan is. But importantly, he makes the point that the, uh, the, the success, the victory of the Taliban and the fact that they are now the power in Afghanistan is the reality. He actually uses that word and he goes on to say that the priority now must be to strive to avoid the collapse of the Afghan state. So it's very interesting that he is not conflating the Taliban with the Afghan state. He sees the state of Afghanistan as an entity independent in itself. And it also means, by the way, that he, Putin, and Russia by extension will work with whatever government is in power in that state in order to ensure that that state which is to say Afghanistan remains stable and united and does not break up into or break down into civil war and chaos, which could threaten the uh, neighbouring states, other states, with migrants and uh, uh, the spread of international jihadism. And also consider perhaps these words, which are so interesting, the, it is imperative to put an end to the irresponsible policy of imposing outside values on others, 
to the desire to build democracies in other countries according to other nations' patterns without regard to historical, national or religious specifics and totally ignoring the traditions of, of other countries. There has not been a single time when socio-political experiments of this kind succeeded. All they do is destroy states and degrade their political and social fabric. That is the most clear-cut repudiation of humanitarian interventionism that I have seen Putin actually make, though he has, of course, spoken about the issue on many times. He has repeatedly made clear that Russia is not in the business of international humanitarianism and that he considers that that entire approach to foreign policy is not only completely counterproductive, but that it destroys and undermines states and creates chaos within them. And that is a very remarkable statement from Putin, but of course it is one which is in great, to a great extent consistent with Russia's entire approach. And then he goes on to discuss the importance of stability in Afghanistan. He takes note of the fact that the Taliban for the moment are saying that they will look after, protect residents and foreign missions. And he gives the clearest indication that he expects um, the, uh, uh, or rather that he hopes that the Taliban, who are now the real power in Afghanistan, can be uh, worked with, that they can a, a constructive dialogue can be established with them to achieve peace in that country, uh, by contrast with the humanitarian interventionist policies, which ended in such clear-cut disaster. And then over the course of the press conference, in reply to a question, Putin re returned to the whole topic of humanitarian interventionism and Afghanistan all over again. And this is what he said. Regarding the operation in Afghanistan, it can hardly be described as a success. Quite the contrary, but concentrating on it for too long, emphasising the, the, this failure, does not serve our interests. We were interested in having stability in this country, but the situation is what it is. I think that many politicians in the West are beginning to realise what I just said in my opening remarks. You cannot impose political standards or behaviour on other countries and peoples whilst ignoring this special, their special nature, which includes the ethnic and religious structure and historical traditions. I think that eventually they will understand this, and this understanding will become the guiding principle in their realpolitik. By the way, that is the first time, to my knowledge, that Putin has used the word realpolitik in an actual um, uh, public address. Realpolitik is, of course, a German word, and it is uh, one that Germans are extremely familiar with, but Putin has adopted it overtly for the first time as characterising his diplomacy and Russia's diplomacy going forward. In other words, you deal with the people who are actually in charge and who have actual power in a country and you don't interfere with that country or try to rearrange its internal arrangements in order to suit your ideas and beliefs as to what is good for them. That course only ends in failure and no good ever comes of it. And it's interesting that having made those comments, he then goes to broaden the whole discussion and makes clear that it's not just Afghanistan that he's talking about, it is humanitarian interventionism in general. And he now brings up the topic of the Arab Spring. 
We saw what happened during the Arab Spring, now Afghanistan. However, it is important for our partners to make this rule universal and treat their partners with respect and be patient, whether they like something or not. They should still give these people the right to determine their future, no matter how long it may take them to bring democracy to their countries, and regardless if they like what is happening in these countries or not. They must build neighbourly relations with and respect each other's interests in the international arena. I think that this is the lesson we should learn from Afghanistan. We should team up, team up with our partners, the United States and other European countries. We, that is Russia, must do whatever it takes to join our efforts today in order to support the Afghan people with the aim of normalizing the situation in that country and establishing neighborly relations with it. So Putin's point is humanitarian interventionism doesn't work. He hinted at the fact that the Soviet Union once tried its own form of humanitarian interventionism in Afghanistan and the, fa and the results were bad, both for the uh, uh, Afghans and for the Soviet Union, and that humanitarian interventionism, as it has been practiced by the West, has been a disaster wherever it has been tried. Strange socio-political experiments, as he put it, always fail. They always provoke a backlash. They end up destroying countries rather than building up countries. And the priority now must be to rescue the Afghan state by working constructively with those who are in power there, that namely the Taliban, in order to ensure that Afghanistan becomes peaceful and stable. And that is what Merkel said in front of Merkel and what he will have also said to Merkel in private. And perhaps it's interesting to see now what Merkel actually said about the situation in Afghanistan. Um, first of all, Merkel inevitably and loyally, uh, uh, to some extent, did uh, um, um, go out of her way to defend Few previous U.S. foreign policy, but he did so. In a, she did so in a most interesting way. She says the following: With regard to Afghanistan, I would like to remind everyone about the starting point: the 9/11 attacks 20 years ago in 2001. Back then, terrorist attacks on the United States were masterminded from Afghanistan. That's controversial, by the way, but I, I'm not going to focus on it. This started the fight against terrorism, followed by NATO operations and missions. The situation with terrorism in Afghanistan has improved since then, but the international community must fight the resurgence of terrorism in Afghanistan. With regard to the other project, that is the Afghan people's overall stance regarding their own future. We failed to achieve our goals. I am openly admitting this. Then she does go on to say that there was some progress achieved and there were millions of happy girls who were allowed to go to school and, and women were empower empowered. But then she went on to say, many people find the current situation upsetting However, it should be noted that the Taliban received more support than we would like. We will now need to talk with them and try to save the lives of the people who are now in harm's way so they can leave the country and we can continue to work for the benefit of Afghanistan. So Merkel heard all that Putin had to say. She admitted the failure of the humanitarian interventionist 
project in Afghanistan. She was careful to tie the start of that project to the start of to the events of 9-11. But then she appeared to accept that, in fact, the only way forward now is to talk to the Taliban, who are the real power, in order first to save the lives of people in Afghanistan who, is now, who are now in harm's way and so that they can leave the country, but also in order to work for the benefit of Afghanistan in the future. And she accepted, however grudgingly, that the Taliban clearly does have a degree of support within Afghanistan greater than the Western powers realised. So this is not a wholehearted and full acceptance of Putin's realpolitik, but it is a significant step in that direction. Now, it's important to say that Merkel is will not, will not be Chancellor of Germany for very long, and it's also important to say that what Merkel says to Putin is not always the same as what Merkel says when she's in the United States or in Britain or in other countries. At that point, she is very often willing to sing a completely different tune. However, the latest polling data from Germany rather suggests that it is the parties that are perhaps more realpolitik minded, the Social Democrats, the CDU, CSU, uh, which, will, which are more likely to form the dominant parties in the future German government. So it could be that these comments of Merkel's, which, as I said, take a big step towards accepting Putin's realpolitik, might be uh, acceptable or perhaps what may be starting to come in Germany itself. We will see. But at least Putin made the case for Realpolitik to Merkel and by extension to the Germans. And at the moment, the Germans, or at least Merkel, do seem to be somewhat receptive to it. Anyway, that's the Germans. As we will see, the Italians embrace this kind of realpolitik with a lot more enthusiasm. This despite the fact that Italy at the moment is led by the technocratic government of Mario Draghi, who is, as we know, an enthusiastic uh, supporter of the European project, having previously been the governor of the European Central Bank. And we have seen how the Italians are much more willing to embrace realpolitik positions from the readout, a very detailed readout, that the Chinese Foreign Ministry has provided of a conversation which took place uh, yesterday between Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi and Italian Foreign Minister Luigi Di Maio. Now, this is the readout of this conversation, which has been published by the Chinese Foreign Ministry. And I will read the sections of it, which deal with Afghanistan in full. And they read as follows. On August 20th, 2021, State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi had a phone conversation with Italian Foreign Minister Luigi Di Maio at the latter's request. The two sides mainly exchanged views on the situation in Afghanistan. Wang Yi said that a new page had been turned in Afghan history and a just historical conclusion will eventually be reached about what happened in the past. But one thing is clear. It does not work to impose certain values on other peoples and civilizations. It has never worked, nor will it ever work. Those are almost exactly the same sort of words as were used by Putin when he spoke to Merkel. And of course, they are the same words, almost exactly the same words, 
as Wang Yi himself used when he spoke to Dominic Rabb, the foreign minister, the British foreign minister, on the previous day. We see that the Russians and the Chinese um, both categorically reject humanitarian interventionism. They, all, they both say that attempts to impose ideas and systems on other peoples from outside never work and never will. Anyway, this is what Wang Yi then went on to say. Wang Yi said that the international community is concerned about the future of Afghanistan and all parties share the common hope that Afghanistan builds an open and inclusive political system, pursues moderate and prudent domestic and foreign policies, and severs ties with all terrorist organisations completely. Again, the words, the thinking, is almost identical both to Putin's and to the words used and the thinking expressed in Wang Yi's conversation with Dominic Rabb on the previous day. And then, and then uh, Wang Yi continues as follows. We have noted that the Taliban spokesperson has made active responses to the said concerns of the international community on many occasions and demonstrated a cooperative act attitude. To hear the wor their words and look at their conduct, we hope that the situation in Afghanistan can keep moving ahead on the right course. At the same time, we need to see that there are still many destabilizing factors in the country and the shaping of upcoming policies of the Taliban is also uncertain. Wang Yi said that the decision about the future of Afghanistan should be made by the Afghan people and respected by all parties. It is certainly necessary for the international co community to play its due role too. One approach is to try to exert pressure, cause financial difficulties or even contrive certain sanctions. This will not solve any problem but will backfire instead. In other words, Wang Yi and China are condemning the decision to freeze Afghanistan's foreign reserves, and they made it very clear that they will strongly and vigorously oppose any attempt by the United States and the Western powers to impose sanctions upon the country following the Taliban takeover. And then he goes on to say, what the correct approach is. Another approach is to pay attention to the active signals that the Afghan Taliban sent recently and encourage it to make adjustments and conversion towards a modern political course. This is undoubtedly beneficial to the Afghan people and is conducive to regional stability, thereby forestalling the occurrence of refugee and migrant flow waves, which is crucial for Italy and the entire Europe. China has all along supported Italy in playing an active role in international affairs, assuming the G20 presidency, and makes an active contribution to solving the Afghan issue. Again, notice the parallels between what Wang Yi is telling uh, uh, Di Maio of Italy with what Putin said to Merkel of Germany. The key now is to stabilise Afghanistan, build up the Afghan state, try to persuade the Taliban to continue with their moderate, their current moderate policies in order to prevent Afghanistan falling into chaos and becoming a place which exports refugee and migrant waves and international terrorism. Well, again, it's almost identical. In fact, it is identical to Putin's and Russia's view. But then, then we see how the Italians react. And this is perhaps the most striking contrast with the way in which uh, first Dominic Rabb and then, to a lesser extent, Merkel 
uh, um, responded when the same sort of realpolitik lecture was read out to them. Um, Di Maio expressed that China has an important influence on all international and regional issues and can play a key role in Afghanistan. Italy completely agrees with China's view, supports active communication with the Afghan Taliban and the provision of positive guidance. The international community should make concerted efforts to prevent Afghanistan from becoming a gathering place of terrorism again. Italy hopes to have discussions with all parties within the G20 framework to seek consensus and solve issues. In other words, where Merkel basically hinted at her agreement with Putin and his adoption of Putin's realpolitik approach to the issue of Afghanistan, Italy and Di Maio are entirely unequivocal and uninhibited. They entirely and completely agree with the approach that Russia and China are taking. They entirely agree that the way forward is to work with the Taliban, seek to provide it with positive guidance, and work with the Taliban to try to build the Afghan state to stabilize and consolidate it so that it no longer becomes a potential destabilizing factor uh, uh, with threats of migrants and refugees and terrorists and potentially drugs flooding out of the country. And note again something which Putin did not say to Merkel, but which uh, Wang Yi did say to uh, Di Maio, and which Di Maio also embraced, which is that the Russians and the Chinese, and Italy also, want to use the G20 structures to set up some kind of international uh, uh, cooperation to assist in the stabilisation of Afghanistan. Now, I'm going to make one immediate observation. When I discussed in my previous video the equally interesting discussion between Wang Yi and Dominic Rabb of Britain, it was striking that the Chinese readout did not mention what Dominic Rabb's response was to the lecture that Wang Yi read out to him. That can only imply that either Dominic Rabb didn't understand what Wang Yi was talking about or disagreed with it. By contrast, we learn from the Chinese readout that when Wang Yi expressed the same views to Di Maio of Italy and did so, and the tone of the readout is softer, so clearly this was these comments of Wang Yi were expressed in rather more measured and perhaps even friendly language. On this occasion, the Italians, we are told from the readout, totally agreed, completely agreed with China's views and support active communication with the Afghan Taliban in order to stabilise and build up the country. Italy, in other words, is taking a different approach from Britain and presumably also the United States. The Germans, at least Merkel for the moment, but probably the Germans too, are open to the realpolitik ideas. They're hearing from the Russians. The Italians are embracing them when they hear exactly those same set of ideas from the Chinese. And the Italians are going further still. They are agreeing with the Chinese that work should be done through the G20 format to organise 
and international uh, uh, cooperation to try to help the new government that is being uh, formed in Afghanistan with the Taliban at its core. It's becoming increasingly clear to me that the British, lamenting this failure in Afghanistan, are becoming isolated and that the Americans are in danger of becoming isolated also. It's also becoming clear that the uh, Taliban uh, are, are going to be receiving mentoring, increasing amounts of mentoring from the Russians and from the Chinese. And not only is this going to be supported by some European countries, but perhaps most striking of all, the Russians and the Chinese are pushing back hard now on the whole humanitarian interventionist philosophy and that this is now receiving a reception, a, a positive reception. This from some countries like Italy and to a lesser extent perhaps Germany with the Italians also agreeing that humanitarian interventionism doesn't work. That could mark a sea change and it would suggest a, a split in the collective West. In other words, some Western powers, Italy, perhaps Germany also, gradually shifting towards a more uh, real politic position and gradually repudiating the humanitarian interventionism to which Britain remains committed and which is still strongly supported by many people in the United States. I would add that a third country has also been contacted by the Russians and the Chinese, or at least spoken to by the Russians and the Chinese over the last few days, and that is France. And the person who spoke to the French was none other than Putin in a conversation he had with Emmanuel Macron. Now, this is a very short readout, but I will, I will read it out briefly because it does give, a, give one further important clue. And it reads as follows. The situation in Afghanistan in the wake of the Taliban taking power in that country was reviewed in depth. Both presidents noted the importance of ensuring the safety of civilians and addressing pressing humanitarian issues, uh, challenges, and expressed a willingness to help establish peace and stability in Afghanistan through cooperation, including within the framework of the UN Security Council and the G20. Italy currently chairs the G20, and it does look as if the Russians and the Chinese are now lobbying countries like Germany and Italy itself and France to try to achieve some kind of international consensus at the level of the G20, both to recognise the new government that is being established in Afghanistan and also to develop a mechanism for cooperation with it. The British, as I said, will not be pleased at all. The Americans will be unhappy, but we will see to what uh, uh, whether whether these attempts achieve any uh, positive outcome. Well, for me, the most important points to take away from this is firstly that the Russians and the Chinese are working very closely together. Um, that's been obvious for some time. But note the identity of thinking even the similarity of the words used by the Chinese and the Russians, Putin in this case and Wang Yi, when they talk to foreign leaders, especially those of the lead leaders of the Western states. Humanitarian interventionism is bad. It destroys countries and always fails. Uh, the proper approach is to work for those, with those who are the actual power 
of any particular country and the priority is stability and allowing each and every country to work out its own destiny by itself. It's also, it seems to me, clear that the Russians and the Chinese are working together on a joint initiative to use the G20 as the international body that will recognise um, um, the new government in Afghanistan and which will coordinate economic and political uh, help to that country, providing, by the way, a cover for China and Russia to integrate Afghanistan into the international institutions, the Eurasian institutions first and foremost, and perhaps eventually to bring it into the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. It will also make it easier, by the way, for the Russians and the Chinese to recognize whatever government is eventually established in Kabul. And we see the Germans, at least Merkel for the moment, receptive to these ideas and the Italians enthusiastically embracing them. The British, for the moment, look out in the cold, look, being, look like they're being left out in the cold, whilst the Americans are all over the place. Well, we will see. But it is, again, striking to see how the Russians and the Chinese work together now to execute what is clearly becoming a common plan. Well, we have the, a saying in Greece that in the kingdom of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. In this particular issue, the Chinese and the Russians have a plan, which is but more than anyone else does. We will see whether it succeeds or fails. But in the absence of any alternative, it is clearly the plan which is starting to gain traction. The Italians are coming on board. The Germans might do so. And the West is becoming divided, something which the Chinese and the Russians would want to see anyway. Whether this plan will work, whether it will prevail, whether the Russians and the Chinese will indeed be able to mentor the Taliban into setting up an inclusive and stable government in, in Afghanistan, whether that government will indeed achieve international recognition, whether the G20 will support it, whether it will be integrated successfully in the Eurasian institutions and join the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, whether it will be able to participate in the Belt and Road Initiative. All that remains to be seen. But at least it is a plan and a realistic one based, as Putin put it, on real politic and perhaps just perhaps it will create a pathway to peace for that tormented country. Well, thank you for joining me for this program um, on Afghanistan, uh, bringing, I hope, uh, uh, to an end this series of programs in Afghanistan over the course, made over the course of a week when, it's fair to say, events in Afghanistan change the entire complexion of the world. Uh, but who knows, maybe with events in Afghanistan still very much in flux, we'll have to re return to that issue again shortly. We will see. Anyway, regardless, I look forward to you joining me again in future programmes on this channel and on our main channel, The Duran, where I do programmes with my colleague and friend, Alex Christoforo. Please also join, look up Alex's channel. You'll find links under this video. And please go to our other platforms, BitChute, uh, uh, Library, Odyssey, the new uh, uh, free speech platform, SuperU, and of course, Locals and Rumble, which I understand are now joining forces. And where on Locals, we have a thriving community and where I'm now finally, I hope, able to start my own projects, which I've been working on for some time and which you should certainly look out for. And please also, if you want to support our hardworking channel, please 
uh, uh, do so via PayPal, Patreon and Subscribestar and by coming to our shop, buying the amazing things you will find there. We've got a whole magnificent new range of hats, as you will see. And of course, we've got uh, magic mugs. This with this one, by the way, has the emblem of Russia or, um, uh, um, and is very similar to the kind of mug that Putin and Merkel will be drinking from in the Kremlin, though I suspect not as good. So we, uh, our, 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 our shop with its magic mugs, its hats, its hoodies, its T-shirts, its sweatshirts and all the rest. And also, please uh, uh, remember to check your subscription to this channel and to tick the like button, like button to this video if you've liked this video. And thank you for joining me again today. And I look forward to you joining me again soon. And have a wonderful day until then.